Uh, obrigado. E, um, uh, desculpa, e, uh, meu, uh, desculpa, meu português é muito malo. So, uh, falo inglês para a apresentação. So I'm sorry, but uh, my, my Portuguese is extremely bad. Um, a bit of a change, I also want to talk not just on, um, on what is content distribution, but also what is occurring in terms of the world market and video and video services for telcos. The previous presentation, and particularly the commercial and video that we had, there, is uh, I think extremely relevant in terms of where things are going as service providers. But I want to talk a bit also, too, is what Dr. Shepard presented earlier today with regards to the changes that a telco has to take a look at in terms of moving forward. And these are organizational and behavioral changes to be successful. Um, overall, I think I agreed with a lot of the things that Dr. Shepard presented today, except for maybe one or two slides. Um, but I think the, the key point here is uh, most of it is, is, is online. Um, I think the key thing here to take a look at is what is the evolution that we have to look at as, as providers. Traditionally, we looked at our customers as users. And when we take a look at what they are doing today, they are now consumers. What does that mean? Our original service lineup was basically traditional voice, POTS, plain old telephone service. We moved to cellular services, HSI, or high-speed internet, broadband services, and eventually some companies are now deploying video. But each of these have looked on as a single service driven from our network and our engineering side. If we take a look at the evolution and see where customers are going, they're looking for services, things that are important and valuable to them, not how it gets there. So in, in the voice side of it, it started getting into calling features, even the migration to cellular. In the US market, they have seen significant loss of traditional lines to cellular. So there are people in North America right now that don't have a standard phone line. All their communications, voice communications, is done by the cellular. Well, that, as you can appreciate, has a significant impact to revenue and, and growth. In the cellular side, it used to be just voice. Now it's texts, games, pictures, and I've just seen some recent uh, ads for where I can now do video on my cell phone. In the broadband world, that moved from just browsing and surfing the internet into chat, instant messaging, gaming, music, videos, all of that being delivered now. It's pushing the broadband capacity, peer-to-peer -peer networking, uh, pushing it to the edge and in control of the user. The last part is video. That's probably the last part to move right now. Most of that is based upon standard broadcast video, some DVD now being delivered, but we're now seeing a migration of that already into on-demand content, a growing segment, interactive elements, and what I call multiple content, starting to bring the pieces together of various other content sources like digital pictures, music, onto my TV system. What does that mean? The drive towards a convergence, the ability to bring all these services together, multiple device, multiple application. So what does that mean? I think a key part of this in terms of that triple play that was discussed earlier is why do IP video? A lot of people wrestle with this uh, as they feel maybe I can hold off or maybe I can delay. There's a lot of common reasons not to. There's no competition. Um, from my understanding of the Brazilian market, the cable companies are extremely weak. They're not involved in the high-speed internet. The video is not that strong. So why would you bother to go forward with video? Capital costs to deploy, availability of technology, consumer acceptance and bandwidth requirements. All challenges that have to be considered because of investments required, requirements in terms of capital and people and resources. But things are changing and changing very rapidly. Competition is coming and I, I think a comment would be it may not be the cable company. Some of your competition could be some of these startup company, companies that start to buy some of your services to deliver services to their customers. And that means you have to face a change. Do I become a pipe or to become a service provider? Both are not bad strategies, but both require very different approaches in terms of how you operate as a business. Costs are in line and continue to drop. Technology and vendors are available today. They are, are common and available off the shelf. 
new codecs, gigabit Ethernet access, are all making it capable of delivering these services over today's networks. And I think a key point, that was the second, the second to last bullet there, the most important consumer behavior is changing. Before we could offer a large range, or one service to a large range of consumers. Now we must offer small groups of services to small groups of consumers. The traditional marketing model of selling to a 15 or 16 to 24 year old, very different services, very different applications than what you would sell to a 35 to 45 year old group. So you have to understand that. This gives you a bit of a representation of the activity of what's going on in the world today. These are deployments and active market trials of video over IP. And um, this is a significant growth over the last little while, all occurring within the last two years. Some key points. This is no longer a science project. About two, three years ago, I would say some of the people were on the bleeding edge of this technology. At least eight commercial deployments exist worldwide. Another five will be launching within the next uh, six to 12 months. Large telcos, uh, we've seen significant growth in the last little while from the, or significant interest from the large R box in the US. Um, and Dr. Shepard made a comment about Supercom and I was there as well. Uh, I don't think I saw a single booth that did not have a reference to video somewhere in their presentation material throughout the whole Supercom floor. So it was video, video, video uh, in some way or another. Pretty well all of this is being done on existing ADSL technology with existing MPEG-2 technologies. Broadband or video on demand is being delivered, interactive channels, interactive capabilities, and the migration plans to the new codecs and new services are already underway. So this again, like I said, is growing. It's, it's becoming a reality. This just gives you a quick reference of some of the key um, service operations that we've done, dealt with worldwide. Um, I'm going to reference a couple of them, but it also gives a representative of their user interfaces that they deliver, each of them being unique and custom to their market. And that would be the other element that I think I would like to point out. In moving in forward into these services, it's not a cookie cutter approach. You cannot just take something out of the box. You will find that you will want to customize this and it will be a custom development and a custom deployment for your market, for your customers, and also for your business in terms of adapting what, what makes the right fit for your, mar your business operations. Two key ones that I'd like to focus on because right now I would say they have some of the largest uh, IP video deployments right now. And one I will focus on specifically because we have actual results after being launched for over a year and a half in terms of how they've competed in their marketplace and the results from that. Yahoo Broadband is part of SoftBank. Uh, in Japan. They launched about, um, about a year and a half ago, initially with video on demand only, and have also included br in, uh, broadcast. Over 5,000 titles of video on demand content. Uh, they are approximately 20,000 subscribers of video to date. SASTEL Canada launched in September of 2002 two streams of video against a, a very aggressive cable company plus two satellite companies that were in their market. Uh, to date, they are over 20,000 subscribers of broadcast. They launched VOD as well in uh, fall of last year and have been extremely successful in that growth. They're doing two streams of video into the house on, again, standard ADSL product. So the question is, is can I compete against a traditional cable operation and a, a traditional video service? This is a result of uh, surveys that they continue to do month over month within their marketplace. This is the SASTEL Max video service as it compares to, their pre to that consumer's previous supplier, which would be either satellite or a cable company. As you can see, roughly 85% feel the service was equal to or better. The other thing that SASTEL did was also differentiate their product to a degree. And if you noticed on their user interface, their portal, they had ability for the user to access information, services, community content through different formats, such as HTML pages as well as video content. So question is, is 
did they already have, was this just on the DSL service? Or were they also able to take away competitive offerings from other, other service providers? So, so prior to subscribing to Max, did you already have internet access? Pretty well 90% of the users did. And some of this was dial access that they were now able to move over to broadband. Some of this was broadband access that they were able to take away from the cable company who owns, if you look in the Canadian market, the available market of broadband is split 50-50 between the telcos and the cable companies. So they were able to secure competitive offerings away from their, their, uh, their cable companies. A key point here that I'd like to make out, and this was also borne by at least two or three other deployments that we've seen worldwide, 17 to 20 percent of these users did not have a PC. So they used this service as a, a principal basic access to the internet for email and web surfing. So an interesting point there is that this is also an area of growth for you in, in the future areas. Another key point, so we saw how many had internet. Roughly 50% of these customers also represented new broadband DSL customers. SASTEL bundles their service, the video and the DSL together. So they achieved a growth of an additional 50% of broadband users just with the service alone. A couple of financial points. SASTEL is achieving a revenue per user that is uh, above what they originally forecast in their business case. They expect to be cash flow positive about a year ahead of what they originally planned. And their churn rates have dropped dramatically in terms of their other services and products. So net of this is it is a successful service. Just a quick look at some of the bundling results. Uh, one of the key elements that they did realize is that they had to package their other services with the video service earlier than they expected, some of it driven by the competition from the cable company. So here, they managed packages where if you have uh, one service, two services, three services with your video service, you get appropriate discounts associated with it. This would be long distance and cellular, as those were the non-regulated businesses. They cannot right now combine local service into the package, as that is a regulated product. But as you can see, in the, in the in the pie chart here that roughly only 34% 34, 34 of the base do not have a bundle. The balance, 66%, are packaged up, which has reduced churn not only in the video service or the broadband service, but has also re reduced churn in the other areas of the services that are packaged with that consumer. Some additional learnings. And there's, uh, I'm driving to some points here towards the end, but some additional learnings that they looked at is no matter how well they thought they had planned out the market, no matter how well they thought they had understood the consumer or understood what the competition was offering, a good chunk of their original assumptions were wrong. I would say about 50% of their original assessment of what the consumer was looking for was incorrect. But what the IP video strategy and the IP video capabilities offered them is that they were able to go back and modify their service and modify their user interface and modify their packages and offerings to now meet those customer demands and meet the real requirements. So the original focus was based upon what the competition was doing. They now, year over year, do surveys of their consumer base define what are the top requirements from those consumers, and now are able to adapt their service, applications, and user interface to those needs of consumers. Again, focusing of away from a user to what the consumer is looking for. Community content became extremely strong. We've talked about on-demand content. I think everybody focuses on top movies. That only represents around the 30% of the total really used on-demand content that a consumer will access. The other 70% associated with children's programming, community content, specialty content, things that you may be able to charge for, other things that you may use as a sticky application to prevent the consumer from going someplace else. So the focus here is to take a look at other applications, other services, other capabilities of what a consumer can provide. I mentioned earlier they had to launch their bundles and packages earlier, and they adapt that to the marketplace as competition comes in. 
a significant uptake in the, in the student community. Now, Dr. Shepard made a comment with regards to that consumer group that we have to be really aware of. People that are the age of my children right now that have grown up in this environment of the internet, chat, instant messaging, mobile cellular, et cetera, et cetera. This service appealed to them. And the one reason for it is, is that age group has shifted. It's fragmented. They're looking for different types of services and capabilities. They no longer watch straight linear TV. They want to get content when they want it, where they want it. This provided them accesses that was familiar, but also drove them in terms of the new applications and services that they also find appealing. The last point is that they're able to get real, real viewer data. It's an IP-based solution, therefore I'm able to record consumer behavior. From that, they were able to renegotiate content agreements with their content providers based upon real consumer user data. They were able to provide advertising and customization of content, customization of services based upon those real user data. So again, they were focusing as a service provider, focusing on how do I deliver to the customer, not a user. So, where do you go beyond just interactive or IPTV? This is a, a representation of, we have a, an application middleware that we provide to several of our customers, and this is a representation of where we feel things are moving to in terms of the next step. I'd like to point out that this is not a 2007, 2008 capability, this is a 2005 capability. Some of this can actually be done today. So we have the aspects of watch, meet, play, and explore. Watch, you know what? You're never going to get away from basic television. That is, I think, a fundamental. That is your, almost your anchor tenant. So we will have basic television. Recorded programs, PVRs, personal video recorders, whether that be in the network or in the set-top box, that is one of the fastest growing segments that we see right now in the North American market and is starting to take off in Europe. Video on demand. And I do state any type of video on demand, any content on demand. A significant part of the shift that's occurring in that younger age group is moving away from don't give me 200 channels, give me the channels I want to watch and the content I want to watch when I want to watch it. And pay-per-view. And pay-per-view may not be movies, it may be games, maybe other applications that they would utilize. So meet, ability to deliver email to the TV. Chat, services that, uh, if I look at my daughter, if she had the ability to watch a particular show that is a favorite of hers and then be able to chat online with her friends, I don't know if I could get the TV back. But that is a part that has shifted now in terms of, of the behavior of that younger generation. Messaging, the ability to send messages to the TV from a cell phone, from a PC, from the internet, and vice versa, sending those messages back. Video telephony, the ability to now start as it is on an IP platform, be able to integrate voice over IP applications into the service, integrating these applications and services as a future, future capability for that consumer. Play games. Uh, interesting part is that the gaming industry has probably become one of the fastest growing industries uh, to date. If you want to take a look at it, the largest, the largest growing segment for in the gaming community to date is women over 40. Not you, what you would typically expect. And a lot of this is standard games, standard packages that can be delivered today on the TV. Karaoke is a VOD. The ability to also access your movies, your photos, whether they're stored in the home network or stored in the corporate network. And last is explore, the web, e-learning, et cetera. So conclusion, a couple key points. All those examples that I showed you were based upon getting into the market with a basic service and then developing and expanding and customizing that as they went forward. So a key point here is a good plan executed today is better than a perfect plan executed tomorrow. A comment given to me by someone who was selling to a large telco in Canada, 
he was asking that executive, what will it take you to change? And that telco executive said, death or imminent death. I don't think we have the time to wait for that death or imminent death. I, I feel if we're not getting into this service and understanding this now, we may not have that opportunity. The next piece, and a very, very, very important piece, when looking at this as a consumer versus a user, you have to enhance the consumer experience and you have to make it simple to use. If you're not doing those two things, you'll get a take rate with those new people who like new technologies, but will not achieve that tipping point to be successful. Obrigado.